Hey everyone, welcome back to the Spectra Creative Channel. I'm your host, Scott Toy Guru Nightlick. I've mentioned quite a lot that I've worked in the toy industry professionally for you know well over 20 years, but what's made me unique is the fact that I'm also a lifelong toy collector. Don't mm -hmm. patronize me, Scott. And yes, that has given me some interesting insight, but usually the videos I do are about the toy industry. Today, I want to make a video leaning on just the fact that I have been a hobbyist my whole life, and, well, action figures have taken over a lot of my space. I mean, like, a lot. And if you're anything like me, your shelves are runneth over with toy figures. In fact, you may even have a room that runneth over, and you're very quickly running out of space. And with cool stuff coming out every month, well, it becomes a choice. You either get more shelves, buy a bigger house, or stop collecting stuff. Well, because of the fact that I've been doing this for so long, and nothing to do with the fact that I've worked in the toy industry, this is purely as a hobbyist, I thought I could offer some helpful tips and advice from the years I've been collecting and how to maximize space. So, this is a big part because, well, there's not that much information online about this. I mean, you can find a ton of videos about displaying photos or, you know, feng shui your your living room, but, well, let's jump into displaying toys. And away we go! All right, now the first thing is likely, if you're watching this channel, you are between 35 and 45 and male, which means you may have a wife, maybe a husband, but you're probably married, and if you're married, you know that the spouse comes first. But it doesn't mean you can't come up with creative solutions around your spouse's requirements of where toys need to be. For example, toys that are themed like, oh, say, a cook great way to display a figure and find extra space. While your significant other may ask you to keep your toys in one place, like a, you know, a toy room, well, hey, if you can get creative and match them to the decor, like, for example, in your bathroom. I've had a lot of success displaying fishy-type characters because, you know, it kind of relates to water-ish. I don't know. But, you know, hey, it works in any way I can get toys in other places and increase my display space. I've also had a lot of fun with bookshelves and finding figures that kind of reflect the books that they're in front of. So here I have, you know, Simpson Dracula figure, Mr. Burns, or here's a Funko Pop. I believe that's actually Colonel Mustard from Clue, but kind of, you know, African Explorer in front of my uh, How I Found Livingston memoir, or having the Black Knight in his more, uh, I guess, traditional formal helmet in front of Ivanhoe and Robin Hood and the Talisman by Walter Scott. My wife's china cabinet, also an excellent place to hide figures or at least have the excuse to put figures in there because they're extremely valuable, for example, and they're just like family, you know, possessions that you want to keep in a, uh, in a china cabinet, so why not put a couple of hard-to-find action figures, like I have my clear King Grey skull, or that Lord of the Rings wild man figure that never got produced, or some of the odds and ends that fans have given me over the years, like that mighty Spectre uh, uh, Motu meteorb I was given at a convention, or this extra head someone sculpted or rather modified for Mighty Spectre that I put on a body. So, yeah, hey, China cabinets are great, and you can plus, you know, you can have, like, little hidden gems for when kids come over, and they're, you know, trying to locate all the Easter eggs. It's even a great place where I've been able to put my action figure-based wedding cake topper, which was made for me by a great friend at Mattel at the time when I was, when I was working at Mattel and got married, and was kind enough to build this for me for on top of our wedding cake. But it's still action figure display. Refrigerators! Lots of action figures have magnets, so why not take those figures that are lucky enough to be magnetized and you can turn your refrigerator into an action figure display shelf. I mean, granted, you don't have unlimited selection, but, you know, there are some pretty cool toys that have had magnets. Yes, there's some dangerous issues with magnets and kid toys, but in the adult collector world, anyone who's in cold weather gear, great excuse to put them in the freezer. Come on, you know you all do this. All right. What about just general display? You ever come home, or rather come into your toy room, your office, what, at your man cave, your woman cave, whatever it is, and you find figures all over the floor that weren't all over the floor? Action figures tend to be like, I wish I could come up with like a metaphor of something that falls over and hits itself and, you know, like a bunch fall over in a roll. 
I can't think of a good metaphor, but this happens, right? This has actually happened to me last night. I came into my toy room, my office, and in the middle of my Marvel Legends display was a whole row of figures that just toppled over, one after another, hitting each other like dominoes. God, I, still, I need to find a good metaphor. All right, well, this happens a lot, and you'll notice not everybody fell over my whole display. It was just this middle section, you know, and it left this big gap in the middle where one figure knocked another, so the left side and the right side are still fine, but the middle is, you know, missing because all the figures fell on the floor. Well, like a good game of chess, you just have to move your pieces. So what I recommend is taking a character that's a bigger, bulkier character, like Beast here, or, you know, build of figures usually work really well, and deliberately putting them in the middle of your display, as opposed to the front or the back. A lot of people are tempted to put build of figures in the back because they're taller, but if you put these figures in the middle and specifically put them in front of the figures that have a way of toppling over, and we all know who these are. I mean, you know, like Storm, for example, falls over all the time. You know which figures fall over. So put them right behind a figure that's not going to fall over, and that way your builder figures act as kind of a middle barrier and a wall in the middle of your display to prevent the whole thing from falling. All right, lastly, something I really like is the My Belt system. So this was developed for dolls, for Barbie dolls, but I love using it for action figures, even though it's not marketed for action figures at all. It works perfectly. Pretty much any six inch action figure will slip right into the clear C-clamp grip, and then this gets plugged into a clip that can slip onto a bookshelf or a bed side or, well, really anything that's got edges. So you can see the figure without having to you know, cover most of them up since the clip is clear and it easily holds in place on a figure's hips. So you can take figures and you can even use this on things like Funko Pops or really anything that has that kind of width. I mean, granted with a Funko Pop, you kind of have to put it around the whole body as opposed to like, you know, just the, the waist. There's also attachments to turn these into magnets. So any action figure can now suddenly become a magnet for your frigid air, and you can display that. So it's pretty cool. There's also, as I said, a shelf clip. So once the figure is uh, you know, propped up, well, all you have to do is clip them on. Now suddenly you've greatly expanded the amount of display space you have. It's really especially cool for flying figures or you know figures with jet packs because you can have them in sort of mid-air hanging off of a shelf. And... You don't even notice the clips, honestly. You can even have, you know, characters flying through the air, like I've got Captain Marvel and Green Lantern here, just soaring straight at you by reversing the clip and having it come down on the back. And I have some of my favorite Motu figures, even though I don't have space to display all of my Motu Classics collection, I was able to take kind of my top ten figures and clip them to the front of my desk so that I can, well, I get to see them every time I come in the office. And I've turned now the front ledge of my desk into an action figure display. Another great way to put flying figures with the rest of a collection. Here is my Marvel Legends Spider-Man figures, and I've got Black Cat and Vulture clipped to the side, basically for more room. Same thing with my Fantastic Four set, taking a flying character, in this case Human Torch, clipping him to the side, and now I have more room. And, you know, it really not only brings them to life, but it kind of has them, like, flying right at you from the shelf. And it's a really cool system that, even though it's not marketed at all towards action figures, it's it's just sold as a doll accessory, I find it adapts perfectly. And I, I have them kind of use them all over my office to display more figures and really maximize the amount of space that I can have without feeling like I can't see every toy I own or, you know, it gives me more space. Really, really simple, basic solution that will work for any six-inch figure. And, uh, hey, wherever you have them in the house, wherever your spouse may let you put toys, now you can put more. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like more on this kind of topic, just talking about ways to collect and display, let me know in the comments below. I love hearing from you, and I try to comment back as much as I can. Thanks for sharing this video, liking and all that, and I'll see you guys in the next one.